Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in to my official updated Bracketology version 6.0. I'm adding something here to the beginning of this video. We're taking a look at the best performing teams over the past two weeks to give context to this video, how teams are trending, could teams potentially move up seed lines, how about Marquette? You can see this is over like a three-game window the past two weeks, the number one team in the country analytically. You also have Houston, Nebraska, big game on the road at Ohio State. Not going to be an easy one for them, probably like a pick -em game. Ohio State playing better after firing Chris Holtman, Creighton playing very well, Duke just came off a huge win last night, Kyle Flapowski. He suffered a catastro he suffered a catastrophic injury. His leg was almost amputated. Thank God he's okay. Boise State, St. John's playing really well. 3-0 in their last three games. Rick Patino comes out, he whines, he complains, and St. John's, they're loved analytically and you know, 3-0 and in the past three games, the seventh overall team. Purdue, Kansas, Colorado, even Kansas going one and one, still at number nine. Tennessee, South Carolina playing better, Auburn, North Carolina, and USC. Although they only played one game, you can see those teams trending up right now. Let's look at the bracket matrix. Purdue, a consensus number one seed. UConn, a consensus number one seed. Houston, a consensus number one seed. And then you do have Arizona, North Carolina, and Tennessee jockeying for that final one seed with Marquette still hanging around. Kansas, after their recent loss, I think is more so towards the back end of the two line, maybe the front of the three line at this point. You do have Iowa State sitting at the top of the three line, Alabama, Duke, and Baylor. Duke is a team that's really trending up recently. Creighton is on the four line, Auburn, San Diego State, and Illinois. The five line, Wisconsin, Kentucky, Clemson, and Dayton. Kentucky trending up significantly. It always seems like Kentucky is a three or a four seed, at least recently. I guess they were a two seed when they lost to St. Peter's, but it just seems like they're always like a three or a four seed. Uh, but you can see Clemson. I could see Clemson losing to a 12 seed. I could see Dayton losing to a 12 seed. I could see Wisconsin losing to a 12 seed. Looking at the six line, BYU, Washington State, St. Mary's trending up along with Texas Tech. Texas Tech recently got throttled. I wonder if they'll move down potentially to the seven line. Moving on to the seven line, Utah State. There are a lot of metrics and analytics that suggest Utah State probably will lose in the first round. Not that it's a big deal because it's it's a 7v10 matchup, basically a pick em. South Carolina, Florida. I think Florida's better than South Carolina. Colorado State. Another thing I will say, I think a lot of these Mountain West teams are going to get bounced early. Like a lot of them will not make the Sweet 16. A lot of them are going to be involved in 7v10 games, you know, maybe a 5v12, 8v9. I can see a lot of them losing early. TCU's on the 8-line. Oklahoma, they're on the 8-line. Mississippi State and Northwestern. Michigan State sitting on the 9-line. Boise State, who's been, who's been playing really well recently. Nebraska and Florida Atlantic, always dangerous. They made the Final Four last year. The 10-line is Texas, Nevada, New Mexico, and Virginia. You know, Virginia... They've had some bad performances recently, especially offensively. The 11 line, Seton Hall, Wake Forest. Wake Forest, what a bipolar team. My goodness. Huge win against Duke. You had the court storming issue, whatever. And then the recent loss they had, Providence, Gonzaga, Indiana State, and Richmond also on the 11 line. The 12 line, you can see Princeton from the Ivy as a 12 seed, Grand Canyon, South Florida, and McNeese. Not too surprising, that's what we've kind of seen recently. The 13 line, it is Appalachian State, Samford, who got destroyed yesterday. I wonder if Sanford is going to move down analytically for sure. UC Irvine still there along with Akron, the 14 line, Louisiana Tech, Vermont, the College of Charleston, and you do have High Point, the 15 line, Oakland, Moorhead State, Eastern Washington, and Colgate. And then the final 16 seeds, Fairfield getting in from the Metro, South Dakota State, Norfolk State, Merrimack, Eastern Kentucky, and then Grambling. And then the other teams that have just missed the field, at least right now, that are on the bubble, Colorado. They're appearing in 30 brackets right now, just missing out. Overall in the bracket matrix, you do have A&M, 
getting it in 19 brackets. Utah, Villanova, along with Ole Miss. And then you can see Drake, Butler, Pittsburgh, St. John, Syracuse, and Cincy all getting a shout out as well. And then these are just other teams that could win their conferences. You can see the important number to look at in terms of this is the number right next to the seed. So you can see UNLV, they would be an 11 seed, but they just, they're appearing in one bracket. But James Madison, they're appearing in 29 brackets. So there are a decent number of people that think James Madison is going to win the Sun Belt. There's a lot of people that think Cornell is going to be the auto bid out of the Ivy. Also, you, you have Sam Houston State possibly winning their conference tournament, as well as Arkansas Little Rock appearing in a decent number of brackets, along with Quinnipiac, not surprising, Southern, and Lip, Lipscomb. Quinnipiac was uh, in, in the tournament for a long time, and they've recently been bounced out. Let's take a look at the analytics behind some of these seeds. So you can see this, looking at this again, Purdue, Houston, UConn, and in terms of most deserving, that's what this is based off of, Marquette as a one seed, Tennessee, Arizona, North Carolina, Iowa State as two seeds, Kansas, Duke, Baylor, and Creighton moving up to the three line, Bama down to a four seed in this, Illinois as a four seed, Kentucky up to a four seed, and then Auburn, who just, they have a crazy situation. Auburn, in terms of their analytics, is the number four team in the country, but they're just not deserving of being a one or a two seed at this point. They always seem to lose bigger, bigger games, at least this year. You do have Dayton sitting on the five line, San Diego State, BYU, and Clemson. South Carolina, Wisconsin down to a six seed. Not too surprising, you lose to Indiana. I am not high on Wisconsin, but I think a lot of people are down on Wisconsin the way they've played in the second half of the year. Northwestern up to a six seed in this Utah State. Washington State on the seven line, Nebraska on the seven line, Nevada, and TCU. I've always seen TCU as an eight or a nine seed. This is like the first time I'm seeing them up on the seven line. You do have Florida, St. Mary's. St. Mary's is way too low. Yeah, St. Mary's is always too low in this rankings. They're probably going to be a five or a six seed. Virginia and Texas, the nine line, MSU, Boise State, Oklahoma, and Colorado State, the 10 line, Mississippi State, Texas Tech, not surprising, Texas Tech is down there after their recent loss, Wake Forest still in the tournament because analytics do like them, and then Gonzaga, I do think Gonzaga is going to make the tournament, they've got the analytics on their side, the 11 seeds that make it in, Providence and Indiana State, the 12 seeds, they've got Florida Atlantic all the way down as a 12 seed, yeah, they're going to end up overvaluing Florida Atlantic, at least I think the committee will, because they made the Final Four last year. And honestly, you could say, well, that's not fair. That's just the reality of the situation. When you've got a, a mid-major team that makes the Final Four, and the next year, they're kind of in a spot where FAU is to where they're probably like an 11 or a 12 seed, but they're very likely going to be in an 8v9 matchup just because they made the Final Four and they're going to be at least a little bit overvalued. Like, imagine if James Madison would make would have made the Final Four last year. They would probably be overvalued as well. But you can see Florida Atlantic, James Madison, Princeton, and McNeese on the 12 line. 13 line is Grand Canyon. I think Grand Canyon is going to end up being a 13 seed after their recent loss. Samford, Vermont, and Charleston. La Tech, UC Irvine, High Point, and Akron. The 14 seeds are pretty much consensus right now 15 seeds Moorhead State Weber State Youngstown State and Colgate and then the 16 seeds Fairfield and Lipscomb and then looking at the right now the bubble you do have St. John's in this field in a play-in game as an 11 seed Colorado Seton Hall and Utah and then you can see the 16 seeds are right there and then the team's just missing out Villanova right now on the bubble Pittsburgh Iowa New Mexico Syracuse, Butler, Kansas State, along with Ole Miss. And then this is something I wanted to introduce into it. So if you look, this is Ken Palm. Look at the luck rating metric. It's like right in the middle. You can see that's what these rankings are based off of. So you could like, it says luck and then one, two, three, four, five. You can see, is there any team that's a fraud that's a top 100 team? Well, if you look, Samford has the ninth best luck in the entire country and I do think luck, it, it's not an important metric, but you can kind of understand what the idea of luck is. Let's say there's a good three-point shooting team, and then they face Sanford and they go four of 20. Yeah, you could say, oh, that's because Sanford played good defense, but more realistically, they probably just got lucky. The team just shot bad. So the luck metric, I do like it, 
And you can see Samford, maybe a bit of a fraud. Virginia is another one. I think Virginia had a really lucky season last year as well. That's why so many of us picked them to lose in the, in the first round, and they did. Uh, you've got Ole Miss there as well, sitting at number 15 in terms of overall luck. Utah State sitting at number 20 in terms of overall luck out of the Mountain West. Those are teams, really no, maybe South Florida as well, but really I'm looking at like Utah State, possibly a team I'm not going to be picking. You know, Virginia is another team if they make the tournament I'm not going to be picking. Uh, but that's just kind of an interesting metric to look at. And then let's take a look at the brackets and see who we like. So you still have Purdue, obviously, in the Midwest, in Indianapolis, basically playing at home. They would take on Boise State or Florida Atlantic. This is Joe Lenardi's bracket, by the way. And then you look at the 5v12 game, Washington State and Samford, Baylor, Vermont, Dayton possibly ch taking on. I think Dayton would face Seton Hall in that matchup. They'd probably beat Virginia. Bama taking on High Point. That's a good draw for Bama. I'm just not high on Dayton right now, the way they've been playing recently. I think Bama would have an easy path to the Sweet 16. And Bama would also get the two seed in that region, being Marquette. Texas Tech down to a seven. Not surprised there. Looking at the East, you do have UConn as the number one overall seed, taking on Oklahoma or Northwestern. Northwestern's a team, it feels like Northwestern is good for one upset, I don't know, I don't think they'd beat UConn, but that's interesting, Wisconsin and McNeese, I'm, I'm guessing in terms of like, when you look at the brackets, 51% of the people are probably going to pick an upset, like legitimately I think more people would pick McNeese over Wisconsin straight up in that game, Auburn, Appalachian State, Appalachian State's a dangerous team, but I think Auburn gets it done there, St. Mary's, South Florida, Fun little matchup, Iowa State, Oakland, BYU, New Mexico, and then North Carolina as a two-seed taking on Colgate in that region. Moving on to the West, you do have Arizona as the number one seed. We'll see if they keep that number one seed. I tend to think they will as long as they win the Pac-12. The Pac-12 this year is not very good, although imagine if they lose in their first tournament game. They very likely will drop down to a two-seed. I don't think North Carolina is going to move up to the one-line but, I mean, I guess if North Carolina wins the ACC, they will. It just depends what happens in terms of the conference tournaments. You could also see Tennessee possibly on the one line if they win the SEC or Marquette. Those are the teams we're watching. TCU, Michigan State. Oh, if I'm Arizona, you, you, you want to avoid that type of matchup, man. You want to avoid Michigan State. It's just not worth it. I mean, I know when people say Michigan State, they shouldn't even be in the tournament, but it's just not... That is not the team you want to face if you're a one seed in the second round. Kentucky and Richmond, I think that's a good draw for Kentucky. I'm not high on Richmond personally. San Diego State and, oh, they have Richmond as an auto qualifier. Wow. San Diego State, UC Irvine. I would be tempted to actually pick UC Irvine to win that game outright. I am not high on San Diego State this year after their crazy run last year. South Carolina taking on either Providence or Gonzaga. I would expect them to probably face Gonzaga, Duke, and Cornell. And then you do have Utah State. That's actually a really good draw for Duke. They get possibly South Carolina in the second round. And ooh, they would have to face Kansas, though. Kansas has a bunch of talent. They're a solid two seed, even with the recent loss You know, at home. Every, teams are going to go through stretches. They're going to lose games, especially if you're in a conference like that, like the Big 12. Moving on to the South, the final region, Houston, the number one seed. I think my opinion on Houston is they're pretty much an auto lock to the Sweet 16. Like you look at their, yeah, well, I, I would say, yeah, they're an auto lock to the Sweet 16 and then probably an auto lock to the Elite Eight. The, the issues with Houston, it always stems from their offense. They've got elite de defense every year. But in a situation where a team makes a few threes, is Houston going to be able to hang with that? I don't know. I don't think I'm going to pick Houston to go to the Final Four, but we'll see. You do have Mississippi State and Nebraska. I think that's a free win for Houston, no matter who they face. Clemson and Grand Canyon, possible upset there. Illinois, Akron. I like Illinois. Florida, Indiana State. Kind of a fun game there. Wow. Wow. Creighton and Charleston, Colorado State taking on Wake Forest. Wake Forest, good upside there. Tennessee and Fairfield at the bottom. Seems like a really nice draw for Tennessee. Yeah, I, I would like Tennessee to, to come out of that bottom region 
and then possibly beat Houston if that's who they face. Just looking at this, I think that if you're a two seed, you you want Creighton as the three seed in your region over a team like Duke. Uh, but either way, guys, that is just the updated bracketology. That's going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.